You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Okay, we will now call the Board of Selectmen's meeting for August 19th to order. Okay, all set. All right, um, actually first I just wanna uh, make, uh, if we can make one correction on the, uh, let's see what number it is here for bid uh, item number, Eight. I'm sorry. Uh, that one correction. Uh, you know, the request should be award the contract for the purchase of four tires, including scrap, road service, and labor, to JTTS Tire for the total cost of sixteen thousand eight hundred. Can I get a motion to make that adjustment to item eight? Motion to approve. All right. Remove the second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thanks. Okay. Uh, item one to consider and if appropriate approve the minutes from July 1st, 2020, July 8th, 2020, special meeting, July 22nd, 2020, which was also a special meeting. Uh, second. Move second in any edits, comments, changes. Very nice. Oh, Hang on, where are we? All right. You know what? Is yours on mute, right? Yeah, I got it down. And then, but not the volume, but are you on mute yourself or no? Nope. I'm trying to see if the light here it should be off. All right. All right, um, Tristan, can you hear me? You just give me a thumbs up or somebody out. Yeah, I can. I can hear you. It there is a little bit of feedback though. All right, we can have this. Hang on one second, folks. I'll try to hear all the ears. All right. Apologies. Yeah. Right. When I mute Ray, it's it, it when I mute you, Ray, then it sounds okay. But when you're not muted, um, there's a problem with the feedback. Okay, okay. Can, you, can you hear me right now without feedback? No. No, it's still echoing. Uh, you know what? Yeah, try and share it. I don't. Let me just see. I want to think you have to do it. How about now? Yeah. Echo or not? Uh, I think you're okay. I don't know. Hold All right, can you hear him? Yeah, I think you sound fine now. All right, we'll just try to. 
time. Can you, you, you actually try to look behind us? Can you hear Angie? Yeah, I can hear Angie. I can barely hear you now. All right. Turn off the uh, maybe turn off the volume on that one if you don't mind. Oh, you know what? Let me read this. Turn up the volume. Turn it up? Yeah. Good. Can you hear? Yep. Right. We'll okay. do the best we can. Uh, I'll be able to hear anyone. All right. All right. It, 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 just for the record, this is actually in, we had an in-person uh, presentation. We uh, were allowing the continuation of people participating through Zoom. Um, so uh, if you are going to speak through Zoom, then please uh, state your name for the record. All right, uh, item two, to consider and if appropriate, approve an amendment to the intergovernmental inter agreement for animal control services dated February 9, 2005 between the town of Brantford and the town of North Brantford. So this is, pertains to the animal shelter. We changed, uh, basically, um, uh, it will now be uh, net. Uh, the uh, town of North Brantford, just to sum it up, pays 30% uh, of our expenses. It'll be net of revenue, uh, such as um, fees from animal camp uh, and such. Uh, I think Jim Finch uh, attached a letter that he had sent out, a cover letter to this effect. Um, uh, explaining this agreement. The uh, town of North in their last council meeting. Uh, any questions regarding this? All right, a motion to approve? Actually, I have a question, please. Sure. So what you're saying is that the town of North Brantford pays 30% of everything involving the animal shelter? Correct. Okay, now the question I have is that we all realize you have a project coming up that's gonna look for approval. And if I'm not mistaken, I think I heard that North Brantford will not participate in the approval process until after it is approved. And then they'll pay 30% or they may pay 30% of what the project cost is. Am I understanding that correctly? No, the current agreement is they will pay 30% of any of our costs associated with the um, with animal control services here in Brantford. And that includes the expansion of the facility? Correct. So are they going to participate in the approval process? Are you going to uh, we've, had, we've had discussions. We've informed them of this project. We will go do a, a – we will have a, a presentation uh, informing them of the, pre, uh, of the project in detail uh, after the, um, it goes through the Brantford Port of Finance. Well, to be honest with you, I'm not gonna belabor this, but I have a little bit of a problem with that, given the fact that I would imagine that the citizens of North Brantford <laughs> would wanna see where their tax dollars are going before it's already done. I mean, why wouldn't you open this up to the citizens of North Brantford to participate in this, given the fact that they're gonna be funding 30% of any expansion? Yeah, so we provided essentially a fee for service for them. Um, so I, I appreciate your comments, but uh, I don't understand that. I mean, I don't understand a fee for service. In other words, you just yeah, so we, we offer a service which they want to participate in. I and this is the agreement that we took place. So we don't go through when we, we adopt our budget, we don't go ask approval for the budget when we uh, need to. I get that. What I'm okay. asking is, you, now you're asking to pay 30% of roughly a $3 million project. So that's not a fee for service. That's a fee for capital expense. So Capital, capital expenses. Can somebody please shut that door? Because they got their volume up. Uh, yeah. So that's the agreement. It's not the agreement. Again, I mean, I'll take this up with the Board of Finance and the RTM, but I don't understand how the citizens of North Brantford are going to pay a million dollars towards something they have no say in. It's all after the fact. I don't. I don't understand that. Okay. And apparently you don't either because you have no answer. I just explained it to you. So oh, you're more than welcome. You have the agreement. Oh, no, no, you did not explain it. You did not explain it. 
Okay, thank you. Any other comments? All right, hearing that, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, uh, item three, to consider and if appropriate, approve request from Police Chief John Mulhern to donate the watch guard body cameras to the East Windsor Police Department. Uh, he's on Zoom. Oh, he's on. Sorry. Yep. He's logged on. All right. Uh, good evening, John Muller. And, um, Captain Dave Galdenzi, the Brantford Police Department, was having a conversation with uh, Chief DeMarco um, from East Windsor, and their operating budget is, uh, isn't is able to sustain such a purchase, and their capital items uh, were denied, I, I believe. Um, so they're requesting, they do have uh, some of the back end of this system that would be compatible. Uh, for those of you who don't recall, we are migrating away from this product. We're going to a cloud solution that uh, myself and IT vetted. Uh, with that comes new equipment. Uh, some of these cameras are at the end of useful life. Some of them need some batteries. Some of them are still functional. But for a PD that lacks the resources in this day and age with um, what we're facing and some of the requirements coming up. Uh, I think it's a great reuse of these items that we no longer have any use for um, to get them started in this complex process of rolling a program like this out. So I, I do request uh, respectfully that we do grant them this because if not, we, we don't have a use for them. They'll sit in a box and we'll end up uh, in electronics recycling bin somewhere. All right, great. Thanks, Chief. I'll move it. All right, so moved, second. Moved, second. Any dis Question, any discussion? Question to the Chief. So, Chief, are you saying that these uh, items have no value whatsoever? You have to have the back end um, equipment to take the data off of them. You know, you can turn them on and they will capture, but there's nowhere to put it. So, once that camera is either full uh, with with the video or it's out of power. Uh, there's really, you know, for, you know, public use or an outside use, you need the back end. This PD has this system with their in-car camera system, so it can migrate into it. Uh, to put a value on it, I think it's difficult with the depreciation. And on top of that, it is vendor specific in the sense of, uh, what you feed it to so in our example we're going to the cloud it's an axon body camera product uh specific to that so there's some it it's back end as well as hardware but for us um from a system implementation standpoint th there's no operational value uh i don't think you can really sell these on ebay i haven't looked but i don't think that there's a true value they, they've met their their life expectancy that's, you know, so it, just out of curiosity, is this the type of thing that's uh, usually done between departments? Do they look to help each other out when, I've never heard of this, but I haven't really been paying a whole lot of attention to it. Yes. Um, unfortunately, uh, it is. And, and I've been on the other end of it, uh, where you want resources and, and the municipality maybe doesn't have the you know, the ability to provide them. And uh, yeah, so I, I've donated in, in uh, dispatch equipment, donated uh, vehicles. Um, so, hey, when, you, when you're in need and, and you know, what, what maybe we don't need anymore, and, and for us it's, you know, for them to try to implement a system. And when I say that, it has operational uh, impact. So to get a test run, to see how they like it, to get them ready for a future project and a future major project. Again, these are costly projects. Uh, I think it breathes some, some breath into these old items that can be reused for a little while uh, and get them on their feet. So it is, uh, Wayne, it, it is common at times, yes. Yeah, I think it's a nice thing to do. Thanks, Chief. Okay, so any other questions? Discussion, hearing on all in favor say aye. 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 Item four, to consider and if appropriate, approve the following resolution. Resolve that the Brent, that the Board of Selectmen may enter into and deliver to the State of Connecticut Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection, Division of Emergency Management and Homeland Security, any and all documents which it deems 
to be necessary or appropriate. And further resolved that James B. Cosgrove, as first selectman of the town of Brantford, is authorized and directed to execute and deliver any and all documents on behalf of the town of Brantford and to do and perform all acts and things which he, she, he deems to be necessary or appropriate to carry out the terms of such documents, including but not limited to executing and delivering all agreements and documents contemplated by such documents. This resolution is necessary to apply for the, the Demis uh, Omnibus Grant. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll move it. This, uh, this is a, a yearly requirement from the state. The move, move the second discussion. Hearing on all fair say aye. 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 Thanks. Item five, to consider and if appropriate, approve a request from Fire Chief Thomas Mahoney to permit the trade in of two 2009 Life Pack 15 cardiac monitors, serial numbers 381666. 09 and 3816634 towards the purchase of two replacement cardiac monitors approved as part of the FD capital budget. Chief. Thank you. Um, we, uh, we purchase um, just about annually purchase life pack uh, monitors. These are the cardiac monitors that do a lot. Um, monitor the heart um, we can do 12 lead EKGs that help us determine whether someone's having a heart attack and also provide uh, vital signs and um, provide a shock if necessary um, they're very um, uh, they're kind of essential to what we do every day as a paramedic service we purchase about one a year and the town charter um, requires us to ask your permission to trade in any any equipment or dispose of any equipment so that's what I'm here to do tonight. Um, we get about approximately a 50% off um, when we do trade in, um, when they when they run these these types of specials. So these uh, these are both 2009 monitors. Their lifespan's about 10 years. Moves, Selectman Dahmer, seconded by Selectman Higgins. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And uh, just for the record, going back to the animal shelter run, I believe it was, was it Selectman Dunbar who made that motion to uh, for the intergovernmental? Yes. And select, yeah, select one again, second. All right. Got a message. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, item six. Uh, and I just actually, before you leave, Chief, I just want to thank in your role as uh, emergency manager director. I think you tremendous job with this last. Uh, Storm and uh, I just thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. you and the department. Uh, we don't have a shade there, do we? Yeah, we're there. We do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Approve a request from Brian Devlin, Superintendent WPCF, to waive the bid for on call pipelining services. Uh, I believe uh, Brian is participating um, via Zoom. Uh, uh, Brian, are you here? Yeah. Uh, yes, Jamie. Okay. Uh, yeah, Brian Devlin, Superintendent, Warpush Control. We had a uh, trenchless utility rehabilitation uh, last month. We had three bidders, but w what this is is um, we're not we don't have projects. I uh, looked into it with the engineer uptown, John, and what it is we wanted to have the three um, uh, bidders on standby on call if we need work, and we have it in the contract that they we, whatever. You know, lower prices on different projects, we can use either three of the bidders on according to the contract. So I'm just asking to uh, make sure I could get three of them on a contract uh, for on call in case I can't get one in an emergency situation. I have a choice of the other two and also the price availability. I have a choice on the contract which one to use. That's kind of what I'm here for. Yeah, uh, thank you, Ryan. Um, actually, for the, the, the benefit of the, the other two selectmen on this 
uh, board now. Uh, in the past, there has been uh, a couple of instances where uh, we had issues and we had to do emergency repairs to uh, uh, some of the sewer mains um, when they had collapsed due to corrosion. Um, those would be uh, emergency repairs and uh, the previous superintendent would come to us after the fact and we would go through and waive the bid uh, in, in order to cover that expenditure. Uh, after we had a couple failures, we did um, do a, a lot of videotaping of a lot of the lines uh, and, and kind of rated their current conditions and started to develop a plan to address these relining, uh, these areas that need to be relined. Um, in doing that, we issued an RFP, uh, which we um, uh, essentially soliciting unit prices uh, based on size of pipe, type of pipe uh, to be relined. Uh, we had three uh, uh, bidders that um, are qualified, responsible. There's various um, pricing uh, on per foot. So what we'd like to do um, is have all three as on-call vendors. Depending on the particular situation that we have, we can then evaluate um, and we have you know, the pricing to repair that particular line um, and uh, have them come in and, and do it. So we're not negotiating uh, pricing after the fact. Uh, we can then selectively, based on our budget and the need, uh, address a lot of these uh, relining uh, issues that we need to uh, throughout town. Um, uh, I did talk to a couple years ago, uh, Greater New Haven Wastewater Pollution Control, uh, not necessarily for relining, but for some of their sewer work, uh, went through a very similar process where they have a list of on-call contractors uh, to um, address this and they have various prices. So it seems to be like a, a program that's uh, worthwhile and a benefit. So uh, that's what we have before us. Um, and actually just very quickly, I keep moving, but I know we had a, uh, um, uh, a couple months ago, we had a, a couple vendors that we have placed for um, various work as on-call vendors. And, and I think Selectman Dunbar asked about going out to bid, and we would follow a similar process that we did uh, for that, those bids. So with that, uh, is there a motion to approve? Make the motion to approve. All right. Second. Moved by Selectman Dunbar, second by Selectman Higgins. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you Brian, very much. Your crew did a Take great care. job, too. Uh, I just want to acknowledge Brian yeah. and his crew out there throughout the night for several nights, pumping down all those stations that had no power during the storm. So thank you and to yeah. you and your crew. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, item off. seven, to consider and if appropriate, approve a request from Gary Zielinski, Supervisor, of Department of Public Works, to waive the bid for the catch basin cleaning for services and award the contract for Shaw back services in the amount of $43,000. Harry? Uh, yeah, I'd like to uh, wait to, to show that, show that um, we've had show that work for uh, the town for the past several years. Um, although they are not the lowest bid, um, American pipe uh, in catch basin the lowest, but uh, they're not able to perform work in town. They've been booked for solid throughout the year. So, uh, show that actually was 60 cents lower than their their own state bid. Uh, they've been working with us for quite some time. They want to stay in town, and uh, they, they're very familiar with the town and uh, would like to keep all right, so if I look, it's a, it's a difference of they're going to uh, Shaw back will do it for twenty one fifty a catch base. And the uh, state bid is uh, for the twenty eighty five. So a di difference of sixty five cents, um, sixty five cents per catch basin. Um, but you know, think the this contractor is uh, we've had them before. We, they're in town. When they come in, they do all the catch basins. They're 
their data in a timely manner, which we're required to do per our MS4 permit um, and have those completed by a certain date. Um, so for the nominal difference, uh, it's in the town's interest to uh, award to Shawvac. And I believe, how many do you do? About 3,000? Yeah, close to 3,000. Okay. All right. Motion to approve. All right. So move by Selectman, Selectman Dun, uh, Higgins. I'll second. Second by Selectman Dunbar. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Yeah. Aye. Okay, item eight to consider and if appropriate, approve the request from Gary Zelensky, Supervisor of Department of Public Works. To waive the bid and purchase the four tires, including scrap, road service, and labor for its John Deere 544J loader and award the contract to JTTS in the amount of $16,800. Yeah, we, we uh, yeah, priced out uh, four new tires um, for the transfer station and uh, the next lowest price was uh, from Barnwell House of Tires uh, at $24,219.99. Um, JTTS uh, has given us a really good price. And um, actually, we, we called out to one other vendor, but they never uh, got back to us. So um, we'd like to purchase these as much needed for the transfer station. We need a motion first, I ask. Yeah. Make a motion. Now make a motion. Uh, motion by Selectman Dunbar. Second. Second by Selectman Higgins. Go ahead. So, so, Gary, with this one here, you actually solicited bids anyway, or quotes. What's that? You solicited quotes for these tires. Yeah, only yeah. because we knew it was going to be a high price right. item. But this, so this is the lowest bidder. It is the lowest bidder. bidder. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But we just... We go through it. Our, our, our ordinance requires us to go out to anything over 25 to advertise. To it. Right. So he's waiving that formality. The year, but yes, yeah. it, it did go out to a bid. It was just right. it was not an advertised bid. Yeah. Solicited multiple price. Right. So I mean, yeah. it was due diligence. That's fine. Thanks. All right. Any further discussion? Very yeah. not all in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Right. Thank you. And Gary, I want to thank you and your crew for the tremendous job. A lot of compliments by the crew who are still out there uh, doing the cleanup. I know many residents appreciate the, the long hours that the crew has been putting in. And, uh, uh, to, you know, after the storm, not throughout the storm, after the storm, and, and continue to do so to uh, clean up. So thank you and to the uh, crew of Public Works. Yeah. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. Uh, item nine to hear a presentation from the clean energy ad hoc committee on the 2020 Brantford energy plan and if appropriate accept the 2020 energy plan as presented okay uh, i just want to uh the board of selectmen uh created an ad hoc committee the Brantford clean energy ad hoc committee uh a year ago a little uh, over a year ago and um, this committee was uh, uh, essentially it advises uh, the first selectmen, the board of selectmen on different initiatives uh, to um, uh, clean energy initiatives and, and really uh, to not only um, initiatives that the town is contemplating, but also the, those who may not know, the state does set certain goals um, and they have some goals to meet uh, by 2040. Um, in meeting with this committee uh, after they were formed, and we were talking about some different projects, and as I'm sure many of you know, the, the town in recent years has uh, taken on a, a number of uh, clean energy, sustainability projects. Um, but we had asked them, uh, one of the things I asked them to do is create, a, create an energy plan is really um, how are, you know, different ways and methods that they can evaluate that we can actually achieve uh, the goals that the, date, the state has essentially adopted. Um, and uh, so for uh, several months, the committee has um, evaluated where the town is currently, um, looked at uh, you know, various areas, everything from infrastructure to transportation to uh, uh, not only town, town buildings, but also uh, just town-wide, really. 
and uh, essentially put together a plan, which are, um, uh, you know, that really outline different action items. It's really a guide for um, not only the town, but the community to really uh, achieve those goals. And as I said many times, um, you know, when we evaluate these, these different projects, um, certainly we look at the environmental benefits, we also look at the financial benefits, and on the town side, we look at how will this improve uh, operations or delivery of services with uh, a number of different projects that we have taken on. Um, so with that, I will now turn it over to Greg Ames. I know we have a few members here, um, uh, Shirley McCarthy, uh, Bob Bobcock, uh, Elena Cahill, and Greg will lead the um, uh, presentation. With that, I will just also make it an introduction. We do have uh, a, a position that was recently, um, it was a current position, we expanded it to be a sustainability and compliance manager, Diane Berkeley, who is here with us tonight, um, who will be uh, um, part of her role in overseeing, uh, you heard me mention earlier, the MS4, um, some of the compliance uh, mandates that we have uh, pressed on the state, but also will be um, uh, staff to kind of oversee uh, many of our sustainability efforts that we have town-wide. With that, Greg, do you want to walk through the, the plan? Great, thank you. Uh, Mr. Cosgrove said, I'm Greg Ames, resident of Brantford on Two Miles Road. Um, here with my, uh, my committee on behalf of the Clean Energy Committee. committee. To share, share everyone, share with everyone our proposal for an energy plan for Brantford. This probably amounts to about a 15 or 20 minute presentation. We do want to do questions and hear people's thoughts when we finish. Because essentially we're here to share the ideas we found and what we've learned with the community. Use this plan proposal to begin a community discussion about energy. With that, I think I would like to read the committee's mission statement, which goes, in order to improve public health and lower energy costs for the town and its residents, the Brantford Clean Energy Ad Hoc Committee works to meet or exceed the state's greenhouse gas emission reduction targets by increasing both energy efficiency and the use of renewable energy. Will, uh, founded about a year and a half ago, became apparent to us pretty quickly that uh, we're going to need a plan to guide our actions to make sure we get to where we want to go, where we all want to go. Uh, we started that plan with a basic goal, simply 100% clean renewable energy by 2040. We picked this goal for several reasons. It aligns with the state's mandate. It aligns with other towns. The plan we're going to present to you is not atypical. It's very similar to what's happening in towns and cities all over Connecticut and New England. And importantly, the plan responds to the 2019 Brantford Plan of Conservation and Development Call for Action. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Bill Horn, who's with us on Zoom. His bill has been on both committees and can explain the importance of the continuity of this plan with the Plan of Conservation and Development. Can we get Bill on? Hey, Greg. Uh, for the record, Bill Horn, 26 plus in front road. Um, as Greg said, I'm a member of the Clean Energy Committee, and I also worked on developing the recent revision of Brantford's Plan of Conservation and Development, or POCD. Together with several local business owners, members of the Planning and Zoning and Economic Development Commissions, and other respected members of the community, uh, the revised POCD was adopted by the Planning and Zoning Commission in 2019. The process of revising the POCD involved multiple public meetings and surveys. There was strong community support for maintaining or increasing the town's efforts in several areas related to resource protection and sustainability. Uh, 70 to 80 percent of those surveyed called on the town to do more to promote energy efficiency and renewable energy. Um, there's a new POCD Section 12 uh, for the first time in the 2019 plan, 
uh, to promote sustainability and resilience. And it, it calls for the reestablishment of a clean energy committee, which the Board of Selectmen did a little over a year ago. Uh, and it tasks the committee with addressing several specific energy related issues. And the current draft energy plan that the selectmen are considering tonight is the first step in responding to the POCD's call of action. So uh, for that, I'll turn it back over to Greg. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Uh, uh, I'd like to start, start, go through this plan. I, obviously, there's an awful lot in here. We'll try to hit the high points, the things that we think are going to be interesting and significant to you without exceeding our time limit by much. Uh, we started by researching how we use energy in Brantford. Oops, wrong slide. Hang in with me, guys. New computer. Okay. Uh, researching how we used energy. We found two big categories. If you look at the little circle down there on the bottom left, you'll see a red and green segment, which occupies almost half the pie chart, and therefore occupies almost half our energy use. That's the energy devoted to heating and cooling buildings by oil and by gas. Big user. The other big user is transportation. That's the blue circle on the, the blue segment on the left of the circle. That also accounts for almost half our energy use. So those are two things we decided to focus on. One of the things we found as we did our investigations was that energy is already getting cleaner. We're on the way. Solar has been ramping up as the costs drop. If you look at the chart on the right side on the bottom, that shows solar over a period of seven or eight years growing very slowly. People begin to understand how it works. The price begins to go down, and look at how that line climbs. Solar is rapidly, rapidly increasing the portion, the proportion of energy produced in Branford. And now, in addition to that, we're going to find wind, offshore wind, coming online, providing a big segment of our power. So it's getting cleaner, guys. Uh, the next question becomes, how are we going to get to 100% renewable energy? And if you bear with me, there's another chart here. If you look at the chart on the left side of the next slide. There's a red and a dark brown segment on the left and the bottom. That represents energy, energy that we use. The left side of the chart represents today. The right side of the chart represents 2040. The energy use declines. If you look at the blue line and the gray area on the top, we're anticipating that we can make the energy use decline by some 50% by 2040. And while that's happening, if you look at the two segments on the bottom, the dark brown is climbing. That's the use of renewables. The good news is that the red. The big segment that takes up almost all of our chart today gets to zero by 2040. And what that means is we stop burning stuff, stop using fossil fuel. So, uh, reduce consumption 50% in 20 years. How are we going to do that? First off, we increase the energy efficiency and building performance in the town starting with energy audits that find opportunities to save energy. We'll, do, we'll transfer to things like LEDs, increased insulation, weatherization, controls. We'll reduce consumption. Save energy. And in doing that, we're saving money. You're going to see that theme throughout here. This, what we're proposing to do is going to result in a lot of savings. We're going to find and access incentives. There's a tremendous number of programs at Eversource that will help the town, the residents, and the businesses make these changes and incorporate these enhancements. We're also going to help people find state and federal tax, 
rebates and tax credits. You say, how does this happen? I want to point out what I think is a really good example. The town of Brantford entered into an energy conservation contract with Honeywell a little more than two years ago. With a year's worth of effort, the energy consumption by the town buildings, municipal and school buildings, is decreased by almost 30 percent. That's like halfway there. I think that's that's indicative of what can be achieved. And I, I think our town deserves a lot of credit for that one. Next step to reduce consumption, electrify heating and cooling with high efficiency heat pumps. Now, when I say high efficiency, I say that deliberately because these are not your daddy's heat pumps. Heat pumps today are efficient, cost savers down to zero degrees. They function down to minus 15. You forget that the technology that wouldn't go all the way in our climate. Today, we can, we can use it. Doing this, we replace fossil fuels with electric energy. And remember that electric energy is getting cleaner every year. The efficiency of these devices lowers the consumption, generates more energy savings, and generates more cost savings. A couple of examples. Heat pumps are already in use, saving the town money at the fire headquarters and at the community house. Your Clean Energy Committee is working on a heat source residential program to acquaint people with and help them help them obtain residential heat pump systems. This, if you're heating today with oil, propane, or electric resistance, you have the opportunity to save money by making this change. Go back to converting to renewable electricity. Sun and wind. That too is happening now. Locally, the Tabor solar field is lowering town electricity cost, providing electricity for the town equivalent to what it would take to run some 125 homes. On-site solar program, an on-site solar program that we're initiating with the state green bank will do the same by, by adding solar energy on school buildings and the community house. Again, saving money by going to clean energy. There's also going to be a solar option that will will tack on to the heat smart program that I just described for you to help people tie in their own clean energy with the heat pump system. And not locally but remotely, offshore wind is on the way. On transportation. Transportation is also electrifying. There's energy and again cost savings and environmental benefits from driving electric. The town is starting a transition in town vehicles to electric vehicles. We're looking at doing the same thing with school buses. School buses is an interesting one because it raises the issue of health. One of the things that attracted us to looking into this subject, I guess I should be on the transportation slide, huh? One of the things that attracted us to looking into this subject was the knowledge that kids are being driven around in a can full of polluting gases with the internal combustion engine and the exhaust. Uh, moving on to electricity, that's gone. That's, that's just one example of the tremendous health benefits we obtain by converting our society to clean energy. We're also pursuing charging stations 
we've encouraged by discussion several de retail developers in town who are only too happy to add charging stations to their developments. Plan will also look ahead to modernizing the electric power grid, a complicated issue that's embryonic right now and is going to require a great deal of development and study, but offers some great promise. We're not there yet. I just want you to know that we're reserving space in, in the plan and in our, our projections to look into that to make it part of what we do. So, all said, uh, this results in an action plan. And I'd like to share some of the key points of that action plan with you. After a couple of years almost, what have we learned? We've learned that this is all very doable. And it's doable not with deprivation, not with people doing without things, but with savings, with comfort, with better health, and with a cleaner environment. We've learned from the examples that I've talked about tonight that that change is already underway. We need to understand that the public sector, that is, the town buildings, the school buildings, and its other, the other town activities, only account for some 5% of the energy use in town. So achieving these goals requires a community-wide effort and participation, which in our mind will require continued public sector leadership to show the way. I can go back, I can, I can refer you to the Honeywell project, Tabor Solar Field, the electrification of town vehicles. I think it's our job as a town to lead the way and to help the community see the opportunity that exists for them here. And this can be an inclusive effort. It can work for everybody in the community. So in closing, uh, I'd like you to look at this as a starter plan, a plan that needs to evolve, be updated regularly, and often over its life, what a lot of people call a living document. It needs to respond to changing technology and changing economics. Who would have thought that today we'd be looking at solar and wind energy costing less than oil? coal, and coming to parity with gas. Plan needs to evolve, be updated regularly and often to incorporate community input and participation. So, we're here tonight to share our ideas and what we've learned because we believe that now it's time to hear from the community, to start a community discussion about energy and to make this a plan that belongs to all of Brantford. So, finally, we submit the plan, asking for your support and for the support and help of the Brantford community. I don't know whether any of my committee members have other things they'd like to add at this point. If not, I think we open the floor to questions. And we'll uh, open it up for uh, questions or for discussion if anyone has anything they would like to ask the committee. Um, any members, uh, do you have something right or no? Not right I, um, no, I, I guess at some point in time, the discussion should be what, th this is a great, great work. It took a lot of effort and, and wholeheartedly, I think it should immediately get sent out somehow to the town. Yeah, and that's what I, I think, you know, we need to follow up on Greg's comments about this is really uh, the beginning of a public discussion. Um, this is the beginning of us moving forward. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, that this committee is an ad hoc committee of this body, the Board of Selection. So this is the work that they've done, and they're ready to go and really engage and, and move forward. And, and, and fully recognize that this is a living document. Um, with that, I would like, um, I envision us accepting this 
And that's where we can then, I would post this on the, the um, town website for, for full review by the community. We would then, as we had always planned, um, this committee is going to begin a series of uh, public discussions. Um, and certainly the energy plan um, would be a, a topic of discussion. Uh, and I, I expect my, what I had always envisioned is that this, com this committee will um, return on a quite regular basis to update this body on the progress that they're making. Um, and we're here. So uh, again, that's, that's what I was, excuse me, um, was hoping, you know, for tonight. And, you know, by the acceptance of this body is really to start the process and um, public discussion on it. That is really a plan that is brought to us. Comment? <clears throat> sure. Comment? I, uh, part of the advantage of uh, Zoom is that you get to go to meetings that normally you wouldn't go to. So I just happened to drop in on this Clean Energy Committee by chance, and I became aware of this by chance. And the more I heard about it, the more uh, concerned I became. Now, with all respect to Mr. Ames, Mr. Horn, the first selectman, you kind of go on about this backwards. You don't do an in-depth plan based upon the one perspective that a basically skewed committee comes up with and then bring it to the public. You could be, in my opinion, you bring it to the public, you bring it to the residents, you bring it to the businesses first, see what their thoughts are, see what's going on out there as far as thinking goes, and then you formulate a plan and then you can continue discussion. But you did this backwards. You can't do it like this. This is wrong, particularly when you're dealing with a committee of seven or nine members, whatever it is, all of whom are like-minded. They all think alike. They all feel that like man-made global warming is the only thing that's happening out there. There's no room for any other perspectives. And they formulate a plan based around that central concept. Well, the central concept, quite frankly, is controversial at best. So now, Branford, you get about ready to, and I'm pretty sure you're going to adopt this because I'm sure it's in the works politically. You know, that's where you're thinking. But you're adopting a plan that in many people's minds, maybe even most people's mind, is fundamentally flawed. So I don't see how you do that, quite frankly, without putting it in front of the community first. Now, to be honest with you, you know, Mr. Horn speaks about the plan of conservation and development. Well, that's another one. I'm very aware of how that process works. And that's another skewed process where you have basically a committee and a commission and everybody that has pretty much like minds so that, yeah, you know, even that got public input, but then they go in behind closed doors and they do what they want and they come out with a plan. And by that point, people are, you know, checked out. Well, that's wrong too. My point is for this plan to be credible at all. And I said to the committee and they can all attest to this. I said, this may be the best plan that ever was formulated for energy in any community anywhere. But if you don't bring it before the community first and get the public's you know, input first, well then what you've done is wrong. You just, it's just plain wrong. Now I'll listen to any you know, other people's perspectives, but that's mine. I think this should go back. I think it has to go before the RTM because let's be, let's be really honest about this. The reality is this, that you say, well, the plan's not binding. And the plan's a guide, and the plan is a living document. Not really, because this plan's going to get in effect perhaps tonight, and it's going to sit there, and not many people are going to revisit it, and it's going to become, in essence, policy for this town for decades to come. And that's wrong, because you're starting off wrong. Now, I'll open it up, but I think we turn back for a comment. I think it's that important, but I'll open it up for others, because I'd like to hear what they have to say, too. Okay, well, thank you for opening up to all this. Right. Uh, uh, if, if I may, I have a comment, if I'm allowed to speak, please. Sure, state your name. Carolyn Sires, District 5 representative. I have a few comments about this plan and about the process. I'd like to see this survey that you have uh, n uh, the high percent of community support. When I learned about this plan starting on Monday, I went around the district. I don't know of anybody here in my District 5 
that was asked to take the survey. So my first question would be, please direct me to the survey so I may review the survey statistics that show the majority of the Brantford citizens agree with this. Next, you are talking about fiduciary responsibility because you said the fleet of cars and the buses will be converted to electric. I don't know the person I'm on the phone who gave this report. I also feel it was more of a, uh, a slap in the face education where you said everyone must do this. It is our responsibility to do this. It is the leader's responsibility to do this. Well, as a leader newly elected in District 5, it is my responsibility to first canvass the area to talk about this right now and mention Eversource at a time where they have doubled and tripled the rates is not going to go over well. And I'm going to give you a comparison of what happened in California as two people I know are in different counties in California. Right now in the two counties, because they're having black and brownouts, because they went to solar and green energy, they now are looking at alternatives because the neighborhoods are being asked to use the power after dark at different times. What we just went through right now with this hurricane, with four and five days off, I don't know if any elected official is going to want to go around if we do this and tell the neighborhoods or the buildings, you can use the your utility after dark at this day and you at another day, because that is archaic and going backwards, not going forward. If you can show me a cost comparison year by year for fossil versus solar, and I'm talking a seven-year plan like you're talking, I've only heard a seven-year plan for solar. I want a year-by-year -year comparison of fossil versus solar. You need to sell the people on this plan as once the town adopts it, it is going to look as though the leaders of the town support this and that it is a foregone conclusion we're going to have to do it. Next, you mentioned tax credits. Well, that only depends on what administration is in office at the time. And that changes every four to six years. And this is a long-term plan. So you may get tax credits, you may not. This is a very speculative plan at best. It does mention fiduciary responsibility. Therefore, the RTM in the town should be discussing this before it gets adopted. I don't understand why it would be adopted first. We're talking about a very sketchy problem with Eversource right now, which is not favorable toward the citizens. We're talking about, I will get you the statistics on California where they are now looking to go to alternative energy sources because the people are furious that they have to take alternate days because these certain towns are all solar and all green. So there is, this is just far too speculative for a, a wonderful town that does always due diligence, which is why I'm proud to be from this town, to throw such a plan out there and ask the public to comment on something. I think it doesn't do service to the people who have done a hard job putting this beautiful plan together, but it is absolutely a one-sided plan. And the people on this panel know. I've worked with Shirley to save trees. I've worked with Mr. Horn when people are dumping in the wetlands. I am a very big environmentalist, but I'm also a real realist. And this is a plan that whoever presented it was more or less telling us, if you don't do it, then you are not doing your responsibility. I don't believe that will sit well because I believe the people of Brantford do a wonderful job conserving energy and they know how to do it without being scolded about not accepting one. And to, to tell somebody if they don't accept this, they're not doing their responsibility was what was implied by making that comment. So I don't know that I could support just adopting this because it clearly does imply there's spending with this, there's changes with this. And again, um, to, to the Board of Selectmen, shouldn't we look at this survey first and see who did support this instead of being told that the majority of the town of Brantford and businesses, I wasn't asked, people in my neighborhood weren't asked, and we're from a pretty large district in this district. I just think, I, I, I don't, why the rush? 
when we just had a hurricane with energy problems, with Eversource problems, with the media talking all about California now with the brown and blackouts, how they have to go alternative energies because they converted so much to wind, solar, and green that now they need to find other fossil fuels so that people are um, able to be on the grid and do their energy and do their work. Those are real statistics that can be proven. They're not speculative. And I do agree with one thing. Once the town adopts something, your average citizen, unless everybody knocks on doors and tells them, is going to think this is a foregone conclusion and uh, we're going to go to electric buses, electric cars, and we're going to be spending the taxpayers' money. It's not the time right now. Maybe in a month from now, but I, I still think there's much more to research um, from the leaders that I respect, the three board of selectmen that I respect, let's look at the survey. Let's see who was surveyed. Is it a skewed survey? I mean, come on, statistics could go either way. I can write this report with statistics tilted toward fossil fuels instead, but I would like to see a middle of the line, a report from somebody who wants to do the fossil fuels. If we're truly saying we're looking at the town as a whole, then we have to look at both sides. We cannot just use one side and say this is the way to go, especially if we're saying it's a, it's a mandate it's going to be. Politics changes. We get elected, we get unelected. This has to be done for our taxpayer. It has to be done, and I'll say this forever. Think of their money and what we're asking them to do. We're speculating Eversource is going to help. Did I see something today where a person got a $1,000 electric bill in Representative Scanlon's um, district? A thousand dollars for two people, and you're going to try to fight Eversource? No, I don't want to be on a plan that we're fighting because we speculated in the wrong direction. I please ask for a bilateral uh, report that we can all look at, and 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 more than just a committee looks at. I think the elected officials and their communities need to look at this. We all need to come together as a community. Um, uh, my, my plea to the first selectman, if you're taking this on as a community project, why in fact are we only having it one-sided? The community is much more than just one side. That's that's just my opinion. Yeah, thank uh, based you. on fact. Thank you. All right, yeah. um, there was a lot there. So I'll just, um, so I, I think the survey that was cited was not done by the, it was not part of this committee or this report. It was the, I think they were citing the um, survey that was done through the plan of conservation and development. And uh, so certainly the planning and zoning commission can share that, uh, or the town planner can share that survey. We can get you that. Um, feel free to send it an email uh, requesting that. If you don't mind. Um, to to clarify, I, I don't I I think what was emphasized is the fact that this is not a mandate. This is not a declaration. Um, that this plan and um, I think the the committee and what this board I'm asking this board is to engage the community and to have a discussion. I don't know if you've had an opportunity to review the plan, um, and and. You know what? I think I would rather hear com if there. Hopefully, there's comments specifically uh, to the plan uh, rather than um, uh, individuals. I mean, we should be evaluating the product. Uh, quite honestly, I, I think um, you know that that's what we as elected officials should be discussing and the the uh, uh, engaging the citizens to look at the product and evaluate that. Make decisions, make, make uh, comments and recommendations based on the product, not really on the individuals. I mean, that leads to dysfunction in government. We want to see that. We can see that on the state and federal level, quite honestly. I, I actually um, think this is timely uh, in terms of what we just experienced with the storms. When I look at, you know, going through this plan and the consideration and, and taking a look at and really what is how could a microgrid um, help us and and address some of these things? I I spent a, a weekend over there by on Rice Terrace. I mean, you had a small area that was essentially out of power uh, for for days, and I know that was throughout town. But you have 
uh, a senior housing, a grocery store that uh, many people in that neighborhood depend on, essentially, well, perhaps a microgrid, maybe something as a community start looking into those types of those types of solutions. And that's what we want to engage the discussion. The animal shelter was out of power for, I think, close to seven days. Uh, perhaps that's a, a, a viable location for uh, a, a type of solution that's being presented. And this is what we should be doing is having a discussion and evaluating. And this is, as I said from the very beginning, and I think the uh, 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 Greg's presentation touched upon. This is the first step. This is the beginning of public yeah. engagement. First so, so, excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, one person uh, uh, on Zoom. One person has to talk. So please wait until you're acknowledged because okay. others yeah. can't hear. I have a quick comment, and then I'll you know. No, no I'm, I'm finishing Here's the point. point. You got it backwards. You, you know, in all honesty, you got it backwards. You don't do a plan and then open it up to the public. You open it up to the public to do the plan. All right. Um, this is Amen. Hold out. Hold on one second, please. When you're talking about the plan, and again, I think you have to look at what this is. This is an, a, a, an ad hoc committee put together a framework and a plan, which we can then engage the public discussion. This is not, you know, we, a, a plan of conservation and development. This is not a hazard mitigation or coastal resiliency plan where you then have the public outreach and that is a statutory right. required document and, and they have to, and basically is updated every five to 10 years. And don't this is a, this, okay. please, please, can you, please, I just ask that you just hold off. I'll, I let you speak, you can just wait. So that's where I don't want people to get confused of what this is. So when you say this is adopted and it's a mandate and this is, that is not accurate at all. That is not the intent. But the point um, is, you're going Jamie, about this is the, backwards. You're going about it backwards. I don't understand how you could think that you can put this plan out there and then just go and ask for people's input. Why didn't you do that first? Okay, thank you. Uh, Linda Erlanger, I believe, has a comment. Yes. Yes, hi, this is Representative Linda Erlanger from the 3rd District. Um, I appreciate everybody's comments. I, I first want to applaud the Clean Energy Committee. These are Brantford citizens who volunteer their time and their expertise um, to uh, and, and did this in an effective way to develop a plan that the community can respond to. And, you know, I've worked in business for a long time and it gives the citizens of this town an opportunity to say they agree or disagree with how we move forward. I'm going to just politely disagree with Representative Sire's um, uh, comments about California because we are not California. We are a, we are a community of 30,000 people. This is a community for the plan. We are a microcosm um, and a perfect community to um, test out and to live. Um, in a clean energy environment. And we have the opportunity to do this. And I think to Mr. Cook, to you and to Representative Sires and to anybody else who disagrees, I think we have an opportunity to respect what the first selectman is saying and give the plan a chance to be heard in the community because nobody else has put anything else forward to move us into a renewable energy place. Yeah. And you, I, I don't, I'm sorry, but I, I, I have to, again, applaud the effort of the Clean Energy Committee in putting something forward that the community can respond to. And I thank you for the time. Here's the point though, uh, Representative Erlanger. Don't vote on it then. Don't vote on it. Just put it out there as is, let the community respond to it, let the, commu the community you know, have input on it, but don't vote on it tonight like it's okay with the Board of Selectmen because to your point, Representative Erlanger, it should not be because it's not complete yet. It's not complete. Well, I think that, um, Mr. Cook, if you listen to First Selectman Cosgrove, that's what he's saying. He's saying that the First Selectman will agree to put this, if they agree to this plan, they will put it forward to the community. The RTM will not be voting on this without input from the community. And I, I asked the First Selectman to confirm that. Thank you. Why vote yeah. on it at all? I'm just asking, why vote on it at all? Just put it out there now. As I, as I stated, just to be clear, that this committee, this is, 
a creation of this body. And so therefore, I thought it appropriate to bring back to this committee to then review the plan and is this an issue we want to put out there. And as we've always said, this is a living document. I use the, uh, I referenced the uh, plan of conservation development, the hazard mitigation plans. Those are statutory requirements. A municipality needs to do those. A, a municipality does not need to do a energy plan. I think there's tremendous value in this. And since this body, I, since, you know, I'm often uh, criticized by you, Mr. Cook, from acting unilaterally, I, I the, you know, bring it back to the body that created this uh, committee and get the support. So us as the Board of Selectmen are in favor of us moving forward with an energy plan. And this is the framework which we can then build off and begin public discussion. I welcome any comments. I welcome uh, input. I, with that, I think no. Selectman Dunbar has a comment he'd like to So, so uh, you know, I've spoken to many of you um, throughout the days and, and trying to figure out where, really what we were doing tonight. And, and I think based on the presentation and what I'm hearing, I'm looking at this, unless I stand corrected, and, and that's why I'm putting it out. I'm looking at this as the energy committee was a subcommittee. They went out, they did their job, they brought it back to us for review. And I take it as any vote we're having tonight is not a binding that we're accepting that this is the gospel. I'm taking it as, yes, we like the work you did. Now put it out to the public so we can get their input. That's, that's, that's how I'm getting it. And if, if I get a commitment from people here that that's what it is, I, I think, I think Wayne, in some respect, that that takes care of what some of what you're speaking about. And I had the same concerns about, you know, I'm open sorry. transparency. I'm gonna, but I think it'll work that way. That, that gonna, I, I truly do. I'm going to let other people speak, but that's not how it's working. I'll, I'll, I'll come in at the end. Representative Sires, um, if I may speak, it's Representative Sires again. My my one uh, comment again is then the committee is malformed if it is only going to give one input. Why is there not a committee that will also give a comparison to fossil fuel? As the other representative had stated, as she is in business, always in business, you take both sides. You never take one side. So I'm not, as, as again, uh, the people on this committee know me well, and I reached out to them many times for help for conservation. I'm not objecting or I'm not subjecting. I'm saying a fair and balanced, and if we're going to have one side, then why wasn't a committee of like-minded comparison uh, folks formed for, for both reasons? I, I'm just speaking for the town in general. Not as anybody who is superlative and knows everything. And my comment with California is, it isn't the state. They were two small communities in California, not the entire state, that are looking for alternatives because they are progressive communities that have people who had to work from home that were unable to because they went all green and they had to make choices once it got dark who was going to be able to use the electricity because they did not have enough during these brown and blackouts. It was small communities, not the state of California. And they could be extrapolated as they were communities like our beautiful small community. And I'm not opposing or disopposing. I just think that more dialogue should have happened in both ways because I do know once this is voted on and adopted, is the majority of people who are so busy and crazy with everything going on are going to just say, oh, the town already accepted this. How then is the Board of Selectmen going to move this forward for community involvement when the Board of Selectmen gets very few people at their meetings? Are you going to allow these committees to, what is your plan to further community involvement? And I don't mean by this committee, because I have not been reached by them. How are you going to plan to move this forward and make me comfortable that there is going to be involvement by the community um, in, in larger scale, since this is going to affect everybody's wallet. No doubt it's going to be a financial uh, effect for people. Representative Ingraham. 
Actually, uh, if you just uh, please pause for a second and please wait sure. to your knowledge before speaking because then the others on Zoom cannot hear you. I think Blackwoman Higgins, you had a comment? Yes, yes. Uh, Yes, I'd like to uh, thank the committee, the Sad Hoc Committee has done a tremendous amount of work. It is just, if, as I understand this correctly, this is uh, a, um, a uh, just a beginning. It's a very minor step if you think about this. The state is setting forth uh, requirements as we go through to the year 2040, if I understand this. So now we are just beginning to look at what if what style, what are we going to do? What, are we, what do we as a town envision um, for energy? This is the wave of the future. We all know it, it's coming. What, uh, reliance on uh, fossil fuels and coal, uh, and of course electricity, our grids, are, are, our main grids in the country, are deteriorating as we speak. I don't know uh, if many of you knew, but uh, back in the 70s uh, when we lived in New York, uh, there were two major blackouts for days and days because the major grids were, 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 were really uh, not working well. So, no one is saying that this is the absolute only way we are going to look at the problems of, of energy renewal. We are just asking to t for the, with this wonderful committee, what they've done so far is bringing some of their thoughts and ideas forward so that the public then can digest what they've put forward and answer or question or not, not, uh, not support certain things, let their feelings be known so that the selectmen, all of us, can then listen, evaluate, and go forward from there. We are here for the town. We are here to do the very best we can for our town. And uh, that's really all I want to say. But thank you very much. I want to ask one question to the first selectman, and he can ask the chair, the, the chairman of the committee. Do we, in fact, based on what what does the committee really need us to do tonight to go forward with something that we've already said is non-binding and it's really informational and and. Do we need to take any action tonight or can we just say thank you, go forward to the public with our support, but without a vote? Because that seems to be what the, the big stress is over or, or do you need something else? I mean, we've already said that this is, it, it's, a, it's a great document. You did so much work. You're gonna be bringing it to the public. Can you not bring it to the public without us taking an official vote? That seems to be up for, debate as to what we're really approving or not. I take it as thank you for your work and please go forward and educate the public and get their input, which is what I, I think people are asking for, which I believe by talking to some of you, that's what you planned on doing further. Um, obviously, they didn't go to all your committee meetings, but um, is that something that's workable or do you need something else tonight? Because, I mean, I, I, I don't think we're going to get any consensus um, and, and I, I truly do want you to go forward and, and well, present this to people, so. Now, just to clarify, this is an ad hoc committee created by this body. So they, they need direction. direction. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's what, they're, what they're looking for, for direction. direction. Is this something that, you know, they, they've worked on this plan. They, they've, I mean, those who have reviewed it, we've all complimented on the work they've done so far. Mm -hmm. They need some, some validation that they continue to work on this effort, which uh, um, and I think that is the responsibility of this board, which created this body, to give them that direction. No, uh, no. by ordinance, they're not created. Wow. They're not created by, uh, uh, you know. Again, there was this body created them, so we need to give direction. And as far as the comments about those who who would, uh, like you know, would like to be involved. I welcome that. I've, I've sat before this when we uh, put names forward before uh, we put it out there. This, um, if you're interested in, in being participating, and please put your name forward. You're, that's not, you know, that's completely inaccurate. Excuse me. I think Ray Ingraham uh, had a comment. 
I did. Thank you. Thank you. I sent a couple of messages. Hey, um, you know, the, you know, in, in processes, I mean, in business, uh, in governmental bodies, if you send a subgroup out to go out and do a, a, a bit of work, they come back and present to the boss, section leader, or the committee that, that sent them to say, hey, this is what we put out. Is it okay to go to the next step? So there is an expected vote or acknowledgement. I don't, you know, in government, governmental bodies, you don't, there's the only way you can say, okay, go to the next step is, is to vote. I guess you could all nod, but then you're going to end up with people that said, well, you didn't really give them, you know, um, permission. You, you, you kind of halfway did it. So, you know, so it's, it's my opinion that anything that moves forward, moves through even, you know, RTM subcommittees, at certain points, you know, the, the leader of that committee will say, okay, do we have something we want to present to go to the next step? And, 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 and that's, that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, a couple, you know, a couple um, comments on uh, you know, Selectman Dunbar and uh, Representative uh, Sires had mentioned about, hey, you know, what are the next steps? I, you know, I'd also like to see some of those laid out to say, okay, we're going to be advertising here. We're going to have a pub, you know, a couple of public meetings that if it's going to be done by the group that put the work together to organize, then that's, that's, that's your, be uh, who does it. Um, and then, you know, people that want to get involved or people that want to make sure that people know that something is to get involved with need to go and contact those people. I mean, we have our regular means of newspapers, radio, you know, whatever. We all, we, we all do know that there is a list of people that don't know that something's happening no matter what we do. So if we have people that want to reach out, make sure that they 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 reach out. If it's RTM members that want to go do it, they're the best conduit to every neighborhood. Thank you. I'm going to tell you something right now, Representative uh, Ingraham. If I hadn't shown up at that meeting, I guarantee this discussion would not be happening, that this plan would have been put through as pretty much the plan of energy for the town of Brantford. I think that Selectman Dunbar has it right on the head. Do not vote on this thing. Send it to the RTM. Send it to the people in the community, and let's see how this really takes shape. Because, in all respect to uh, Selectman uh, Higgins, you know, the reality is this: that this plan was put in place with a very defined point of view, and there are people out there. I'd like to hear from these people if they're here or not that would disagree with this plan entirely, entirely, saying that it's based on all the wrong fundamental assumptions. So what do you do? You start with a plan that is way out there on the left and think you're gonna somehow pull it back to the middle? How's that gonna happen? Uh, Representative Sires, I have just a, a, a comment with, with, uh, with mm -hmm. one thing. They need a vote to go forward to do what? I thought we were just going to put this out and have community involvement, but it was just said they needed a vote to go forward to do their next phase. I, I just assumed the next phase was just public awareness, and that was why. I mean, I'm, I'm following that they need a vote to go forward for what purpose? If the purpose is just to let the public know about this phase. And I did read it thoroughly. In the first paragraph, it said the majority of Brantford support this. And that's what I'm trying. Before we even go forward, I like to figure out this. This is a lot to digest. And I would like to see it out there through the proper channels to the community, maybe back to the Board of Selectmen with, with some input, because it seems as though it shouldn't be stuck at this level but so my question has there been any funds expended so far it's a great plan who paid for it has it been funded you need to go forward on a vote to do what is your next step and how are we going to get this out to the community word of mouth what are your plans or did you just want a yes vote tonight and say okay that's great we're good we did a good job it is a good plan i mean it looks good i I just don't know if it's a good plan. So what is the purpose of tonight's vote? Can we just say good job, let's get it to the community, and then come back and let's have a good vote and, and, and a fair vote, not a one-sided vote? It, that's, that's my comment. I'm 
you know, I'm enjoying the dialogue. Okay. Yeah, just to clarify, no, the, it's not a vote for and go out for public awareness. It's a a a, uh, a vote to move forward. And as stated, this would then be uh, we would engage the public, not for public awareness, for public input and engagement. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, we have a resident here who'd like to speak. Yeah. You don't um, need Dr. Vote. Shirley McCarthy, send it out to the I office. would like send it out a to vote. The Hold on one second. I would Unless like a vote on, on tonight just, just to give us credibility to go forward with this document uh, to the public. And we have a multiple uh, pronged uh, plan, press releases. It'll be on the town website. We're going to have uh, public meetings or Zoom meetings, depending on the COVID status. Social media, we have a student that helps us with social media, so there'll be Facebook ads, everything. So we'll get plenty of input. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Another comment. <laughs> I'd like to know from the first selectman, why are you pushing this through? I don't understand it. Why don't you just send it to the RTM, send it to the community, because a vote by this uh, Board of Selectmen tonight is going to be seen as some sort of, uh, of an endorsement. No, and, no, but that's the way it's going to be interpreted. You can't say. Well, well, first of all, it wouldn't go to the RTM because this was body was it was created. It, it doesn't. There's not an RTM. Well, if an RTM member, I I, I welcome all the RTM members, and I appreciate those that uh, do do stay engaged and are engaged uh, on this tonight. Um, but as far as uh, you know, I stated many times why this is now before this body. This no, you know, I, I disagree completely. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm going to go yeah. on record. I'm going to go on record that if if I didn't walk into that meeting a couple weeks ago, you would endorse this plan, and that would be the end of it. I don't care what you okay. say. You know that. Right. Thank you. Is there any other comments? Yeah. Hi. Good evening, Elena Cahill. Um. Wayne, I just want you to address a couple of your comments because you're saying things that are factually inaccurate. So the first thing is that we had several conversations and meets with people regarding public communication. And we knew that we had to bring this back to the Board of Selectmen before we could go out to the public. So your statement that it was not going to the public is completely inaccurate and it's sort of misleading. The second comment I want to make is that there would be nothing to bring to the public because what's in here is factual data based on the usage of the town of Brantford. The work that we did with no expense funded is to gather the usage for the town of Brantford so that that information could be provided to the town of Brantford. So when you look through the graphs and you look through the usage of the town of Brantford and the breaking down of the data, it's not biased information, it's factual information. With that information, people can now make a decision, possibly have input. Well, state that reversely, they can have input and possibly make decisions. But the other thing is that there's no commitment on this plan for anybody to do anything. It's talking about what constituents in the town can do. Certainly not what anybody has to do. It's talking about resiliency. It's talking about protecting community buildings to be open. So. I want this to be stated fairly for those who may not have had an opportunity to read this. This isn't a plan of action. There aren't actionable items in this plan. This is information that was gathered for the people of Brantford so that they can use this information, learn from this information, and it's their information, it's the people of Brantford's information. So unfortunately, I don't want this to get skewed in the sense where you're telling people that they were never going to the public and that is a biased committee. It's factual data obtained and collected to be put together to show people what is happening. Addressing costs is certainly a viable concern and everyone's gonna have the right to address costs. But in order to address the public, this first step had to be taken or else we would have nothing to hand them to say, look at the town of Brantford, look at the usage for the people in the town of Brantford. The people mean everybody the community, the commercial community, the industrial community, the residential community, the municipal community, all that data is in here. That's what the town can now look at and have a communication and a conversation around. So please 
don't pass along information that's not true Thank or you. misleading. This was the intent uh, of the committee. Elena, Thank you for the time. Elena, here's the point, and I'll, I'll just be brief. This is put together by a committee in which every single member subscribes to man-made global warming. Okay, every single member. So right there, and it's already in your plan, that's the premise that you're basing the entire plan on. So you can't say it's not skewed because it's skewed right from the start. Okay, thank you. Um, um, yeah, sure. Yep, Ed Grant, Mono East Street in Brantford. I have uh, all kinds of uh, questions and concerns. I'm not going to go through them at this moment if we're going to have continued uh, discussion. Um, first off, a little bit of insulting. One of the early gentlemen that spoke um, referred to the respectable citizens that had been Thank spoken you. to. I find that a little bit uh, whatever. You can figure that out. Um, I don't know who decides who that is. Um, and, and again, we're a community of what? 29,000 people. I stumbled into this whole thing. How many out of 29,000 people here even know of this? I think there's a handful of us. Why is that? And that's a question for whomever. Anybody can answer. Okay, I, I appreciate your comments, Mr. Graham. And I, and I actually, I appreciate you um, staying engaged on this. Uh, you said you have several questions and comments. Um, and I, I welcome that. And I'm not sure the comment you referred to about respectable and who made that, so I can't can't address that. But um, again, I, I I just want to be clear. I do think that creating a, a, a plan uh, I, for for energy is, I think, in the interest, long term interest of our community. Um, and I do feel uh, that this is the first step. Um, and I, I, I do feel that it does require, and I stated a lot, uh, uh, community engagement. And I appreciate um, uh, <coughs> uh, Elena Cahill's comments that really put what this document, for those who haven't had the opportunity to review it, put it all into context. And, for, uh, uh, and I urge you, I, I do want to begin this. I think this is an initiative that the uh, town should uh, uh, take on and move forward. I think there's uh, uh, any benefits to it. Um, and, and quite honestly, I think it's something that will be serve the town long term uh, quite well. Well, uh, and, and that may be, it, it affects every individual and every family in this community, our beautiful town of Brantford. And I'm just curious though, how is the message going to get out? To, to the residents again so, i stumbled yeah. into it no, right. uh, and so so quite honestly to, tonight is part of that i mean the, the reason why we're here is to have this presented publicly and to begin the public conversation so um i, I appreciate the fact that you know there's there's twenty eight thousand plus residents in the town of branford and not everybody's following exactly what's going on or being engaged but we try to uh uh you know uh, get as much information out there as possible. And as I stated at the beginning of this presentation, that we would then, from this moving forward, we would then uh, put this on the town website for all to view. We would uh, begin a series of, uh, of public discussions and engagement. And this is a, a, a document that could then be uh, further refined but, but again, I think what is important is what Elena touched on. If anybody, you know, we hear that this is going to affect all of us. This is going to have an impact on a f financial impact, we heard. You know, this really, there are not, you know, actionable items. There's not a declaration. This of, of support by this board isn't mandating uh, anything. Uh, on its residents or even for the town to to move upon. It, this is, is simply a, a guide on how to uh, get there. And as I, I said um, in the very beginning, in order for us to be successful in terms of uh, achieving some of these goals or, or these goals, it's going to require 
uh, businesses, residents, public uh, citizens to to uh, to uh, you know move forward with this. This isn't something that you know we could be successful by a mandate or declaration, and that's not something I would advocate. So what I really hope to do for tonight Sorry. again is to just begin the public discussion. As I said, this being created, so I'm going to put it forward as a motion. We're going to have well, yeah, I like to comment that, for that. I'll yeah. Okay, like so I, I would put forward a motion that we continue as the town of Brantford to fully to develop a Brantford energy plan. So are you endorsing this plan? Are you voting for this plan tonight? I'm, you, I'm, as I said, this is always the first step. This is to engage. If those who, who are, take the time to read it, and a lot of this is data, this is facts that are in here. That's what is in this plan, this 12 page, which is actually a Well, some, some of it's debatable fact, Jamie. I'm sorry, but there is, there is some debatable fact, but. Mr. Grant. First, I, first of all, Ms. Cosgrove, may I say something that I think I'm going to clarify, uh, Representative Sires? What you are saying is true. For those who choose to read the plan, it is information. However, I encourage the Board of Selectment to review the Zoom recording because the presenter of the plan made comments that if you don't support the plan, you are not being a good leader. He also made comments that it is going to require electric buses at purchase because if not, then why would we be not specifically responsible? So reading the plan if you endorse is one thing, but if you will listen to the Zoom of the presenter of the plan, subjective comments were made about the people if they don't support the plan, subjective fiduciary responsibility comments were made about future purchases by supporting the plan. So we have two dichotomies the written plan and the presented plan. And the problem is, if you do not get on one page on what the plan is, then we're going to have a problem with the community involvement because the presenter of the plan was not the one who wrote the plan. So perhaps maybe we can review the Zoom, sit down with these people, and then put together one plan that is on the same page. Because I agree with the presenter, Cahill, I apologize if I got your name wrong. She stated it very clearly. But the presenter of the plan did not state it that way. And it's all factual. You can just listen to the Zoom. What, what, what was said and the comments that were made with the gentleman making the comments. There was okay. comments made about people don't support it. So we do have two different plans that we're talking about. I'm talking about the plan that was spoken and a little about the written. And the Board of Selectmen perhaps was talking about the written plan. But you do have your committee that you picked presented a plan that made statements of financial responsibility and made statements against people who don't support the plan. So if you do vote on this tonight, you may be insulting people by, by the comments that were made about the people who don't support the plan. So maybe we can do another meeting to vote. I, I don't know. That's your decision now, but that's exactly how it came across to me. So yep. I, I think what you're, what I think I, what everybody has been saying, really, I mean, I don't think this is really requires uh, this much debate. We want it. I, I think, you know, there's been an acknowledgement that there's value to having an energy plan. There's been acknowledgement by many that have uh, made comments that they would, uh, um, you know, recognizing that this needs to start somewhere. And, um, and there's an acknowledgement that uh either we should be doing further community engagement um and i'm saying acknowledgement by the commenters and by the board so i that's what i put forward in the form of a motion is that we would then begin to the undertaking of a branford energy plan that's fine and motion and last that's been seconded comment, and i will one last uh, comment one last comment. Further, two things one okay. The citizen didn't walk into that meeting. You would have no way continued the discussion. This would have been Brantford's energy plan. First comment. The second comment is this: that if you vote on it tonight, and it was, and it's going to be seen as an endorsement, despite what you say, because there's no caveats on your vote. Then 
the solution, I believe, is just get a citizen's petition, bring this to the RTM, and that way we're guaranteed to, to uh, continue the, the uh, discussion. The, the representatives, uh, I'm sorry, selected to come by this point. That's fine. Go ahead and vote, you know, vote all you want. We'll just bring it to the RTM ourselves. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how that accomplished. Uh, I, I, I guess uh, my comment about my vote, as I believe I'm, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, I'm voting on this plan being made public and brought to the public for input. And this is a non-binding plan, but this is the plan that you're going to bring there and then solicit information and input that has been brought up that may not have been given. Is that correct? Is that what I'm voting for? Okay. Is it a draft? Excuse me. Is it, is it, is it is a draft. draft. My understanding, it is a draft. It's a living document, oh, and I got that. And I got that information today. I verified that. You call this a draft. I think we're okay with that at this point in time. If, if it's a draft. Yep. Amen. A living document. No. And it's, and, and it'll change. It's 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 going to no. change based on input. No, no, no. It's a draft. Are you voting yeah. on being a draft? I'm voting on what I was told today was a draft. Okay. If it's yes. a draft, it's a draft. I made a motion that the town will move forward with the creation of an energy plan. So that we have a st first step here. That's the motion. So to your point, Ray, and your comments, that this is a document that we are what's coming out of this board right now if successful with the vote based on the motion that we will then uh the town is endorsing the board the fact that we are going to create a a uh energy plan is it a draft is it a draft it has even it, it, this is a draft according yeah. to what i got yes oh, yes i was told this, it's a draft framework whatever you want to call it but yes it's right. it's not the plan that's fine draft. the draft we're okay I think. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I any other comments? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And I will talk to IT to get this on the website as soon as possible. And I will uh talk to the committee um about beginning the uh public engagement. Now obviously it's uh, with uh, COVID and everything, it's difficult to do uh, large public hearings, but we'll do some some uh, uh, outreach the best we can until things we are uh, resume to normal. Thank you, everybody, for your comments. All right, item ten: uh, uh, reappointments. Economic Development Commission. Richard Squiglia and Albert Canosa. Terms to expire July thirty first, two thousand twenty three. Second. Moved second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, go ahead. Comment is this, I'll make them fast, but I think that it has to be noted that the Economic Development Com uh, Commission does not have any representative from the development community or the commercial real, uh, uh, real estate uh, community. You know, I won't go on and on about this, but these are two fine members of the community. I know them both. But you've got to start looking to put people on this EDC, the Economic Development Commission, that actually know how development works. And you don't have it. Put people on there like no energy or whatever. Well, that's fine. But what about somebody or a couple people that actually know the development process, that know, you know, commercial real estate, that know economics of a small town that, you know, as it relates to development. You don't do that. And I mean, with all respect to the people on there, you don't have one single person, not one single person on that Economic Development Commission that understands development. I'm sorry, they just don't. And I've been to many, 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 many meetings. And you know what I don't know is even worse? They don't want to understand development. They really don't. I mean, I bring things up that I think are very germane to this discussion, and they just ignore it. Why? Because it's inconvenient. So. Go ahead and appoint these two guys. They're two good guys, but don't think for a minute they're bringing anything to the commission because they're not. Okay, I'll just uh, 
put it out there once again, if anybody's interested in, in right, uh, to serve on any boards or commissions, uh, please put your name forward. And you can also contact your, uh, your town committee, your respective town committee. All right, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, Conservation and Environmental Commission. Uh, Dan Fitzgerald, term to expire July 31st, 2023. Carol Lee Hall, term to expire July 31st, 2024. And Adrian Bonnenberg, term to expire July 31st, 2024. I'll move it. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Seconded by Selectman Selectman Higgins. Uh, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Appointments, Conservation Environmental Commission, Peter Yates to fill a vacancy left by Eleanor Solis, terms to term to expire July 31st, 2024. Second. Move, second, discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Planning and zoning, alternate, Massimo Liguori uh, to fill a vacancy left by Dave Dyer, term to expire October 31st, 2025. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Item 12. To consider and if appropriate, approve the following proclamation. Centennial Proclamation declaring August 2020 as National Women's Suffrage Month in celebration, recognition, and honor of the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution. Whereas the bold, courageous, and powerful women who fought for the ratification of the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution on August 26, 1920, deserve special celebration, especially on the 100th anniversary of its ratification in 2020. And whereas the right to vote is the cornerstone of our democracy and the fundamental right upon which all that our civil liberties rest and whereas the 19th amendment did not, did not, I got it, sorry, the lights are off. Uh, did not guarantee suffrage to all women, including Native Americans who did not gain the right to vote until 1924. For Asian Pacific Islander Americans, it was 1952. African American and Latin Americans suffered voter suppression until the passage of the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and 1975. And whereas the fact that today women are active in local, state, and national government and are running for office in unprecedented numbers reminds us that we all follow in the footsteps of these resolute American suffrages. And whereas the 19th Amendment of the United States Constitution has played an important role in advancing the right of all women. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Brantford hereby recommend that all citizens and civic institutions honor the role of the ratification of the 19th Amendment in further promoting the core values of our democracy as promised by the Constitution of the United States reaffirm the opportunity for students and adults in the county to learn about the, commemorate the, the sorry, and commemorate the efforts of the women's suffrage movement and the role of the women in our democracy and reaffirm our desire to continue to strengthen the democratic participation and to inspire future generations to cherish and preserve the historic precedent Established under the 19th Amendment. Motion to motion to second. Moved and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. And the town will be having an uh, August 26th, a ceremony noon on the front uh, steps of Town Hall. I welcome uh, selectmen and any others to come uh, uh, witness. We'll have some uh, speakers there. So that'll be noon on August 26th. Thank you. Uh, okay. Any other business? A couple of things first, Selectman. I'm going to keep it short because this meeting went on a lot longer than I think anyone anticipated. 
and uh, Trista has a few slides. I wonder if we can just look at this. I'll, I'll keep this under five minutes. Probably won't even go that long. Just want to go over a couple of quick things, and then I'll just be done with it. We can discuss it next meeting. So, if, um, you know, this is the Tabor property. I just want to, you can go through them, Trista, if you wouldn't mind. I just wanted to call to the board's attention that there was a number of things proposed. Next slide, please, Trista. This is the ball fields that were proposed down there at one point. You see the public works, which got nixed, but this gives a community an idea of what some of the possibilities were, and it's not gonna ever happen if we keep giving that property away. The next slide, please. This is J.C. Wyatt's idea of a golf course, which I think had a lot of potential. I think it might still, you know, quite frankly. So the next slide is the same thing. You know, I think it's a great consideration for that piece. And again, if you keep giving it away for, labyrinths and tree farms and you know hiking trails and everything else we're never going to even have an opportunity to do this. so we can revisit that in the future the next issue is the uh excuse me next slide please Peter. i think it's coming up tristan you have the second set of slides Yeah, I'm sorry, you can't see them because I can see them on my screen. I don't see the second slide. No. All right, hold on, give me a second. Hmm. Can you see them now? Uh, yes. Yeah. All right, just, okay. uh, you know, just to revisit this quickly, I mean, that's, this issue was still out there. We'll continue to be out there, be in front of the RTM in the next month or so, so we can pass on this one for the time being. Next slide, please. Same with the Medlin piece, that would be before the RTM, but as you can see, serious problem down there, which I directly place on the shoulders of the Brantford Land Trust. Next, please, Krista. This is a little bit more about the Medlin piece. This is the catwalk that they built to take down, the, that they, uh, Figured they had to take the berm down. There's an aerial view of the catwalk, which will all be hopefully for the RTM. Next, please. And these are the three individuals that I think have to stay accountable for what they did to Jay Medlin. You know, Peter Raymond, the president of Land Trust, Bill Horn, and John Lust, who were in charge of the catwalk project and really received no permits that they needed. And I think, you know, my opinion, I think it's a, you know, it's a valid opinion, acted terribly terribly irresponsible but you know we'll bring that up again the other thing is too this is another issue that's coming up here and i'm getting more and more aware of it there are serious problems serious problems with parkside village and i went to one of the meetings of the Bradford housing authority you know i must i must have been to a few hundred at least meetings in the last many years that was the worst you know commission or authority i, I mean it wouldn't let citizens speak or anything and i came away saying we know what are you what are you covering up here, guys? Because you got to let people ask questions and speak. And there's a real concern down there that things, perhaps, you know, as serious as fraud and embezzlement and cover up are going on. So this too is going to be brought before the RTM. But again, I wanted to call it to the board of uh, selectmen's uh, attention, please. Again, is there any further development on this investigation that apparently I know Selectman Dunbar has been asking to see? The letter is there any any word on that uh no I, as we uh discussed at our last meeting i'm trying to arrange a meeting with the attorneys and the board and we'll have that well, how hard is that to do uh, they haven't they haven't uh weren't available this has been a tough month all right well can we expect it the next meeting because that'll give you a uh, month yeah i no, hope so I, you know forgive me but i won't hold my breath because i don't okay. even think the letter exists okay this is just more continuation of it and then um, next slide, just the same thing, same, you know, next slide, same thing. We've, we've, we've been over that. Yeah. And then uh, same thing, we've been over that. It'll come before the RTM, as much as it can be. I just ask people to go to our website, BranfordFraud.com, and see more information on this. That's it. Thank you. Okay. I guess just uh, in the interest of everybody's time, um, for all those slides, you can probably refer back to uh, the July 22nd meeting for. Uh, response on those slides. Uh, they were the same that were presented, other than the. Right, but I'm gonna, I'll bring them up again in the next meeting when we have more time, okay? Thank oh, okay. You. Yeah, thanks. Have a good night. Um, I think we have one more.
Shirley McCarthy, yeah. like to address the board. Meeting by thanking you, the first selectman, for all your positive yeah, here. and yeah, here, constructive. Shirley. I want to. Is there a red button? Is it green? Is it green now? Can you hear me? No, it is. No, no, it's green. green. It is green. Okay. okay. Like I said, I want to thank you for all your positive and constructive support, as well as your ready availability. I want to acknowledge how hard you work for this town and also for your impeccable honesty and integrity. Thank you very much, Jamie Cosgrove. Thank you. Uh, well, sure. <laughs> But I just want to say, I just want to thank, uh, you know, we're fortunate in, in Brantford to uh, have uh, great people working for this town as you, throughout the meeting, I acknowledge those uh, department heads and their departments for the great work they've done. But also one thing I, I think, uh, I just want to take a moment, the, uh, the amount of volunteers that serve on various boards and commissions uh, who serve this town that really make it a great town. So. I'd uh, just like to publicly thank you and everybody that serves. <clears throat> thank you. A motion to uh, adjourn? Yes, you can. Thank you. Second. <laughs> so move the second. That's non debatable. Thank you. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Good, good This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BrantfordTV.org.